It's time for the Giz Whiz with Mad's Maddest Rider, Dick D. Bartolo. This is episode 1647, recorded Thursday, November 2nd, 2017. Pancake to Waffle Converter. This episode of the Giz Whiz is brought to you by Casper, an online retailer of premium mattresses for a fraction of the price. Because everyone deserves a great night's sleep. Get $50 off any mattress purchased by visiting casper.com slash gizwiz and enter the promo code gizwiz. On this episode of the Giz Whiz, we have three kid gadgets that will help kids do things. Also, I show off my new theme for this month, and we get to find out what the heck was it. All next on The Giz Wiz! It's the same show with Dickie D and OMG Chat on your PC. It's time for The Giz Wiz because gadgets are his business. They've got a gizmo sickness, geek disease. Under pathology, rows and rows of USBs, growing blue and LED. Get ready for the Giz Whiz now. now! Now! And here he is, the guy you always turn to when it comes to gadgets, Dick D. Bartolo. How are you doing, Dick D? I'm good. How are you? Doing good myself. It's been, um, it's been a big week. H- Halloween. Um, did you do anything for Halloween? I did the house. You know, I, I made it look all spooky. I used a few Giz Whiz things to make it look uh, fancy. Uh, in fact, oh, oh, even Giz with set pieces, the uh, the lights here, these blue lights on the set, I've turned them into strobes and uh, made them like cycle through colors. And then I used a Philips. Oh, great. Yeah, I used a Philips so On the front porch? Or you yep. just left your door open so no. people could look in? <laughs> exactly. Like, hey, look at these lights. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, and then I used a... Um, uh, Philips Hue bulb and turned it green and put it in a cauldron and put some of the um, those fake uh, spider webs around it to look like bubbling oh my froth. Gosh. And, um, I like decorating for the holidays a lot and I put up lots of cobwebs. I even had a at one point I had gotten a fog machine um, for a stream idea, but I found out that this fog machine sets off my smoke alarm, and oh. uh, so I don't use. I've never I've used it like once to set off the smoke alarm. So anyway, I set it up and uh, that was, I had that, so every once in a while a big party would come, I'd set off the smoke machine and stuff. Oh, great. It's kind of fun, I love it. Yeah, no, Dennis decorates the hall here. Yeah. And cobwebs, I don't have to do it because my apartment has natural cobwebs. Perfect. Yeah. It's spooky naturally, all year round. Yes, exactly, one of the joys of never dusting. It's like Halloween all year round. Yeah. It's uh, it's it is funny because um, I have you know a little front garden area, and I it always it always you know gets a little you know over the year that it takes you know it gets a little filled with weeds it kind of fades in color so I feel like Halloween because I know people are gonna be tons of people are gonna be walking up to the front door I'm like got to get the front garden looking good so like <laughs> I went and got new mulch for it and stuff like that I felt like it was a really good way the, the mulch says that it has. Tw- well, you know, 12-month color or something like that. So it's a good way that every year I go and remulch and do stuff right at the same time every year on Halloween. I thought that was perfect. Pretty, perfect. Pretty <laughs> um, I have I have some pictures. The chat room's asking for pictures. Um, I don't I don't know exactly how many pictures I have, but uh, but yeah, it, it was fun. It was really fun uh, this year. Here we go. Here's some here's some photos you guys will like of. Uh, what my oh my gosh the every my, there we go perfect um, this is kind of the the front oh, of it that's great. with all the cobwebs and then I think I have a few there we go uh, here's the cauldron I was talking about that I put with the Philips Hue you can see like the a lights production holy the Giz with lights in the background so yeah had a, I had a whole bunch of fun uh, with nice. Halloween this year yeah I, I love nice. Halloween it's always so fun to uh, well it gets bigger every year. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah. it is. It is fun. It yeah. is fun. Yeah, and I'm lucky. My neighborhood has uh, lots of families, so um, I I bought three bags of candy, and I I had to stop. I there was one group I had to turn away, the latecomers, because I was just out of candy. I had no more candy left. Um, <laughs> Did so. you see on Facebook someone posted? When your kids come home with candy, examine it carefully and had a close-up of a Mars bar. And on the bottom it said, best if eaten by June 1999. <laughs> oh, my gosh. 
Yeah, I know. Oh, man. <laughs> I, I kind of thought about doing that when the candy was on sale. I'm thinking, it's Halloween themed. You know, I could just buy it for next year. Like, yeah, keep it away. Well, yeah, it's nah, probably the, good for a year. Yeah, the expiration date would have given it away. It has expired uh, sometime yeah. in the middle of the year in 2018. I felt like, uh, nah, I shouldn't, I shouldn't do that. I shouldn't do that. Yeah. yeah. Well, now Halloween is over. The month of October is over. So yes. I'll have my November. We, we, There's a ton of stuff packed in this episode uh, because we have the new what the, what the heck was it. We have the new what the heck is it. We have the new November theme. So I guess let's jump into it. And uh, okay, so I have three off. gadgets from uh, the Time to Play Holiday Showcase. And I seeked out three things that lets kids do things. Uh, so we're going to start with a, a new tape called uh, Make-A, Make-A Tape. And when it's over, when you're watching the tape, in the back of your mind, think of how much money the inventor of this raised on Kickstarter. So here's Make-A Tape. Dick Bartolo, man's maddest writer, and the Gizwiz, one take theater here at gizwiz.tv. This is either the world's weirdest belt or some kind of a toy. Now, since we're at Time to Play Magazine toy event, I'm guessing a toy kind of thing. Anyway, Anne-Marie is going to tell us what it actually is. This is Make a Toy Block Tape. And it's real working tape for all of your Legos and other major construction brands. One side has an adhesive, so you can stick it on any, virtually any surface. And the other side is bendable and flexible, and you can even cut it with scissors. So you can now make construction upside down. Um, well, you know, I'm going to have you look on that sure. side. Oh, wow. There's and, a whole... and we'll look at... Thing. Now you can build upside down, you can build along the sides, you can make cool curves, you can build virtually on any surface and make real 3D creations. So it takes construction block building to a whole new level. And, and is it sold? Oh, are you holding up a package? It, it comes in three sizes. Okay. Sm <laughs> it comes in three sizes, small, medium, and large, and a range of prices from $6.99 to $14.99. And it comes in nine colors that are all Lego compatible. Oh, my gosh. All right, we're going to go look at that table over there, Dennis, where we've seen a lot of different size tapes. And, and, and how many feet are we talking about in the different kit? So in the four stud, this comes in six feet. There's a two stud that comes also in six feet. And then there's another two stud that comes in three feet. Three feet. And this is brand new. Is it out now? It's brand new, and it's out now in all major retailers. Perfect. Dick D. Bartolo, Mads Metis writer, and the Gizwiz. One take theater here at gizwiz.tv. Bye. Well, that looks really cool. Okay, so they got funded on Indiegogo. Indiegogo. You know, they have a third. I think, I think this is from Indiegogo. There's a 35 second, you know, dazzle right. reel. Right. Razzle, dazzle, sizzle reel. Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. Just show that, and then I'll tell you how much money they got. Okay. The original toy block tape. Cut, shape, stick, then build. Around corners, up windows, you can make a whole world. Flexible, bendable, restickable, reusable. It's turning building upside down. Wow! With all your bricks. Make a sideways. <laughs> make a go round. Make a shapes. Make a upside down. There's a whole world of possibilities. The original toy block tape. Each pack sold separately. New from Zuru. I swear, there is a specific rock band that does those. That yes, 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 yes. It's like in I, every kid commercial ever invented. Okay. I think the problem is that maybe it's a public domain theme, and they figure, well, it's got to be 30 seconds. Who'll remember that? Whatever. We've used it 90 times before. Exactly. Uh, anyway, the kit, so the campaign is over. It was an August campaign, and it had a different name. So my guess is, is that Zuru bought the rights to it. Uh, so since the campaign closed, it didn't say what they were going for, but it did say funded by 20,051% of what they wanted <laughs> for a total of 1,648,000. Oh my gosh. Why are we podcasting? Why are we inventing a dust a dust rag I that swear. is I, battery operated? I, I that's crazy. 
A million dollars? I mean, oh it's clever, gosh. but is it's it a like million it, point it, six it, dollars worth of clever? For tape, yeah. for for block tape. <laughs> like, there's uh, so many products in the world. There's block tape is like the tiniest sliver of a, of any of the products that you'd ever see in like a Target or anything like that. It's the most simple yeah, I, I idea. Know. It's, it's, I know. I, I, it's, the, it's the kind of thing where you're sitting around and you're thinking, how did they come up with that? They go, let's make something unique. How about kids build stuff on the ceiling? Oh, that's it. That's it. How many times when you were a kid did you say, I if was, only I could, I could build, build on this wall. on the ceiling. If only. Yeah, exactly. I know. Exactly. I wanted to build on the wall when I was a kid, but never I never reached for the heights of the ceiling. Clearly, so. I, I am in the wrong profession, says uh, Chica <laughs> Cherry in the Twitch chat. Well, I think, my, I think most of our audience feels we're both in the wrong profession. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but that's yeah, a whole other story. We should be professional story. Indiegogo kickstart <laughs> yeah, people. people. Um, yeah. Man, that's incredible. I, the, now, it is I incredible. believe, take this with a grain of salt, but... I remember hearing through the grapevine that one of the interesting things about these block building, you know, toy blocks is yeah. that Lego has lost the patent, the patent has run out on the specific Lego block size and Lego block connecting thing. So that that is why you are now seeing all of these different uh, Lego oh. uh, competitors that can work with Lego. Uh, the Lego, um, you know, I was wondering about that. I, I thought, well, maybe Lego feels indirectly. If you have tape that you can build Lego on the ceiling indirectly, you'll be selling Legos because right. the tape company just sells the tape. So you have to buy Legos that, but I, I have noticed, uh, it started last year Yeah, that There's I would tons, see tons of uh, Lego something competitors. that would say compatible with Lego. Yeah. There was a company selling LED bricks, and they said, oh, yeah, you can build these right into a Lego building. It gets one um, step cooler when you think about how you've almost seen Lego the company transform from a block company to an entertainment company over yes. the last few years. How they've get, been getting more into video games, into movies, into entertainment, because their bread and butter, the Lego block was going to become unavailable as something that they had a monopoly on. It's incredible, incredible that uh, the, that they had to change or die, as Crispy Bacon puts it. In so do you, do you think uh, Kerrig is going to start making movies? <laughs> yes. <laughs> now that they the remember Keurig they came movie. out with the, the, the Kerrig thing that would only work in their own pot, and people were so outraged. And this then year... Someone came, Lionsgate uh, presents the K Cup Commando Crew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. This Definitely. is super super K cups with little capes. You know, we should, be, capes. We, should, we shouldn't be throwing this stuff away. We should be throwing this stuff out. No. We should be kickstarting it. Oh my gosh. We should be what are we thinking? It. No, this is the newest Kickstarter. K -cup really capes, it like sells itself. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, anyway. So yeah. Anyway, that's incredible. Anyway, uh, pretty it's, it's, cool. It's kind of a fun. It's a fun. It's a fun thing. Yeah. Can't, um, you can't knock it on the product. It's kind of a neat idea. It is. An, it is Just, a neat idea. Boom. And and it's uh, not a video game. So kids are actually doing something mm -hmm. using. Um, so sort of along the same line, uh, Wowie. You know, Wowie makes robots, and Wowie makes uh, uh, little dolls that teach young young kids like four how to get into coding and so at time to play i saw this new device which um i didn't expect to find at the wowie booth uh, and here it is hey it's sticky bartolo maz medist writer and the gizwiz one take video here at gizwiz.tv we're at wowie wowie you know is famous for chippies they're famous for magnaflex remember chad loved magnaflex like we're going to look at yeah. something now you know we, we do, we're not going to be sexist it's probably skews toward girls but i'm going to get one <laughs> okay uh, and michael's going to tell us about this Hey, how you doing, Dick? How's it going? Good, good. Well, thanks for stopping by, Wowie. Uh, we have the Digiloom. We just launched exclusively at Michael's a couple of weeks ago. It's $49.99, and it's Wowie's put tech into the uh, Rainbow Loom, which makes friendship bracelets. So this, uh, you 
turn it on. We have the app here. And what girls can do is that they can actually weave their design that they designed through the free app into the DigiLoo machine. And it weaves it through and it creates a friendship bracelet. Oh, that's, that's cool. really neat. And, and about, we don't have time to do a whole thing. Yeah. About how long did it take to do that? It'll take about an hour to do that. About an hour? As opposed to five hours from the old style loom that you have to weave everything manually. And it's just battery operated? It's battery operated, and you just have to hook it up to the DigiLoom app. And, and Michael, is it is it only these letters? Uh, can you draw, like oh. could I make my logo, or or you, you you take everything from the design board? You can do your logo and design board. Or you can put anything in. We have characters. You can hear. We have emojis. We have shapes, colors, smiley faces, and then we also have we have five different accessory packs that are also out for seven ninety nine each. So we do have an emoji designated. Uh, a pack. We have a rock diva, a princess, a fashionista. So you, you can keep making different styles of friendship race. That is really neat. And it's exclusive at Michael's? Exclusive at Michael's in North America, in the U.S. and Canada. It's forty nine ninety nine this year. I like it. Dick D. Bartolo, Mads. Uh, oh, can, can it run a little bit? We're not going to make anything, but we're just going to see the motions here. Uh, it sends the instructions from the app to the machine. These are the, uh, these are the motions that it makes. Oh, okay. Oh, I, oh, that's great. Oh, my goodness. That is so cool. I like that. <laughs> Anything that moves interests me. Dick D. Bartolo, Mads Medis writer, and the Gizwiz. One take data here at gizwiz.tv at Wowie. Time to play magazine toy event. Bye. <laughs> It's almost like a 3D printer, but like for an itty bitty quilt. Like, uh, yes, it's so yes, cool. yes, exactly, it's exactly. So now, now I did, I did watch a video of uh, a kid making a bracelet. So, I thought you just put the design in there and the machine made the whole thing, but basically you have to do some weaving in and out of colors because the it the machine only does one kind of oh, uh, color one per, yarn. Yeah. Uh, yeah, per, uh, anyway. Uh, oh, there, there, she's sort of showing it to you. But the, the thing is, if you didn't have that machine and you didn't have the pre kind of made yarn to knit through, I don't even know how you would start to make a bracelet. Here, just that the yarn is already on one of those devices, that seems to be 80% of what you have to do. Um, so I, I think he misunderstood me. I don't know if you could make my logo or not. Right. Uh, it looks like it's a little bit preset as to yes, what they have. Yes, it does. Have. It, it does. But you can, you uh, can change the order. You can change yes, what it you says. Yes, you, you can. You can still have fun. You could, you know, right. make a, a school, your school name or team name. Uh, and I did check today earlier on Michael's, and maybe it's because they're just introducing it. Uh, but it, it's thirty nine ninety nine, not not forty nine ninety nine. Uh, and also, you know, it's so funny. I was watching the video full screen, and the fore and aft arrows there are exactly like arrows on YouTube or any <laughs> website. And I kept putting my mouse on it to see if I could speed up the video. Like, let's go, and let's I, go. Yes, exactly. And then I realized, oh, that's so funny. They, they <laughs> an exact, exact copy of the uh, forward and reverse mouth. There it goes. So it does, it does do a fair amount of work for you. Yeah, that's really interesting. Very cool. The Digi Loom. Digi Loom. Digi Loom. Digi Loom. It's so funny to think of like a loom as being like super digital and like super cool. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, it's just a loom. It's like, what are they? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, very cool from Wowie. Uh, Digiloom from Wowie, and I don't know how long it's going to be on sale, but it is uh, thirty nine ninety nine, uh, and it's only at my, it's still up there, uh, still thirty nine ninety nine uh, at Michaels. Um, okay, our final guy is something very silly. It's a slime maker. Now, years ago, like more than 20 years ago, I used to do a couple of shows on Nickelodeon on one Nickelodeon show. Uh, I would actually show fun gadgets and they had another show called don't just sit there. Uh, it was a two hour show that had different segments. And one of the segments was a game show called you want it, you got it. Uh, and I was the host of that. I had a tuxedo that lit up and, uh, yeah, you I were was... a host on Nickelodeon. 
Yeah. I uh, didn't this, know that. <laughs> what? Of this, uh, of this portion of, yeah, the, of this of, game uh, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, so cold, cool. you want it, you got it. Yeah. Uh, so that was before Slime, and then they started the Slime games, Double Dare. Remember Double Dare? Oh, yeah, Double uh, Dare. Yeah. And then What Would You Do? Yes, um, exactly. Oh, my it, gosh. Yeah, that was like it, my childhood. And they had the whole gas um, uh, stuff. Yes, like, oh, yes. my gosh, yeah. Totally. Exactly. So so now Crazy Art has come in and this is their probably their seventh or eighth new slime creation. So let's see what that looks like. Hey, Dickie Bartolo, Man's Madness writer, and the Gizwiz, one take theater here at gizwiz.tv, pausing for lunch here at Time to Play Magazine uh, event. Uh, Dennis, do you want lime jello or do you want the strawberry jello? No, 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 Dick, it's slime. It's slime. It's not, uh, it's not jello. It's, oh, I know the slime. restaurant here is terrible, it's but. It's one of the hottest crazes this year. <laughs> it continues to be hot through oh, this fall. Oh, slime like Nickelodeon? Like Nickelodeon slime. It's the iconic goo that you've seen on Nickelodeon. We have the Nickelodeon slime kits. Everything you need to make your own slime at home. Oh my, uh, and what's the new, and all the super, super slime. slime. I'm glad you caught that, Dick. Super Slime Studio is our newest slime kit. It actually gives you the apparatus to make the slime as well. Oh, wait a minute, I want to crank this handle. So crank I'm handle. probably going to, oh, I, I can't. I can't hold it and, and turn. Yeah, it's yeah, totally, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well. You, go. You, can see it, you can see it going down below. And you can mix. That helps you mix your ingredients to make your own slime. It comes with everything you need, glitter, glue, measuring containers, the colorant, and the, the sticks, as well as gems, uh, to make your own slime at home. What's the, what's the kit going to cost? The kit is going to cost $19.99. You know what? I can afford to have my own slime. You could buy two, right? <laughs> I could make two different Five slimes. <laughs> I like it. Dick DiBartolo, man's maddest writer, and the Gizwiz, one take theater here at gizwiz.tv. You know, back in high school, I was voted best slime in class. Bye. <laughs> that, that, now, how, how much do you think a kid makes? Because that was a ton of slime on that table. I know. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. And I believe that I believe that man misspoke because uh, I could not find it for under twenty nine ninety nine. Ah, gotcha. Um, and, and and don't go to Crazy Arts website because there they have it for thirty five dollars. But Ooh. it did it seem it did seem like a lot of stuff for twenty dollars. Right. Uh, b because it comes with glitter and the paint, and you can make mermaid slime, glitter slime. <laughs> Unicorn slime, rainbow slime, crunchy slime. Um, it, 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 I think it's fun. Yeah. I don't know what. And, you know, I, I have a couple of videos on. I'm putting on my website. It looks like it really doesn't stick to you. It, it's slimy, but when you let it go, uh, it's not all over everything. Yeah. Uh, the, the, w w if you're watching the video part, you see that. She's mixing in some, I don't know what the little crystals are, but that's so that you can make the crunchy slime. And they do tell you in the video parental supervision because after you mix the color, after you mix in uh, the, the little balls to make it crunchy or you mix in the uh, neon components, you have to add very hot water. So that's where they oh, yeah. say young kids... Uh, but uh, with the new Slime Studio, it'll be a lot easier because everything will go in that big jar and then you can just crank that guy out. And as you see, it, suddenly it, it's, it's kind of funny if, if you're watching the video thing. It, it's, it's interesting that suddenly it becomes slime and then you can pick it up and it's slimy. <laughs> it's so cool. <laughs> It's pretty neat. It's yeah. pretty neat. Yeah, I love that. Um, yeah, there, it's, it's a, there's a YouTuber who uh, uh, makes a whole bunch of like science video and science videos about this sort of stuff. And Scooter X is right. He, this YouTuber's like, it's borax and glue all the time. He's talking about slime. But this is cool that it has all the little extra bits: the the, the coloring, the glitter, the little you know ball crystal things to make it crunchy yeah, and weird. Right. And, and also, I, I think they said they they have a different 
component to make it gluey right. without using actual glue so right. that this or is a, or a, whatever. Yeah. A, 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 yeah, a safer way for kids to go. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that looks really neat. Yeah, pretty neat. Pretty yeah, neat a little stuff. mixer in there so you don't have to act like you don't have to use the kitchen utensils even though, you know, it's just slime. It'll be fine. Yeah. yeah exactly. Very cool. And use it for martinis uh, when the kids are asleep. Exactly. Perfect. There you yeah. go. Nice mixer. Uh, coming up next, we have uh, my uh, crappy corner, the new theme, uh, and what the heck is it, as well as the warehouse. But before we get to that, we want to take a moment and thank our sponsor for this episode, Casper. I love Casper mattresses. In fact, I put my money where my mouth is. I bought a Casper mattress over... It's coming up on three years. It's two to three years ago I bought a Casper mattress when I was living in LA. And I've spent years sleeping on a Casper mattress. I absolutely love Casper mattresses. They are meticulously designed to give you the best night's rest. They are amazing mattresses, very, very fairly priced. Uh, you can head on over to casper.com they have a wonderful website, wonderfully designed website. Their kind of design ethos goes throughout everything that they do. It's made of supportive memory foam for a sleep surface with just the right amount of sink and just the right amount of bounce. Plus, its breathable design uh, makes it very easy to sleep cool and help you regulate your temperature throughout the night. Um, all the Casper mattresses are made in the USA, so you can feel happy about that. Um, you can also feel happy that you get to order online. It gets delivered to your door in a compact box and free shipping with free returns. Uh, now available in USA, Canada, and now the UK. And when you try out your mattress, you don't get just to try it out for some, some small, not just like a month. You get a hundred days, 100 day free trial. Uh, I mean, trial, not free trial. You have to uh, order it. Uh, you get a 100-day trial, um, and if you're not satisfied, you can just return it. Remember, free free return shipping. But I know that you're going to love it. It's just so nicely designed, so nicely made. You're just absolutely going to love this. And for watching our show, hey, you get a discount. You can save an additional $50 toward any mattress purchase, uh, by going to casper.com slash gizwiz and entering the promo code gizwiz. Once again, that's casper.com slash gizwiz and use the promo code gizwiz. Terms and conditions apply. You can go to casper.com slash terms to find out more. I, once again, I'm gonna, I started it off by saying this, I'll end it with saying that I have slept on Casper mattress for uh, years, years and years, and I love them. They're just great. And I recommend them. And it's it's there's so many benefits: the shipping, the the way that it comes in a compact box, and then the mattress itself is just wonderful. So I highly recommend Casper. Casper.com/gizwiz and use promo code gizwiz to get a discount of fifty dollars. Thanks so much, Casper, for your support of the gizwiz. And with that, I believe it is. Still Let's go to Chad's. You know crappy, you don't need it, but you might want it. Corner. At Chad's <laughs> crappy corner. Get it. We're now bringing I, it. I, along with our viewers and listeners, have no idea. Oh my gosh, is it still Halloween? He's holding a knife. That's right. Uh, so we I get to find out what the theme, the theme is. Um, we asked our patrons, like we always do, big thanks, big shout out to the patrons what November's theme will be. And the options were cooking gadgets, traveling gadgets, and app-enabled gadgets. And you could probably guess by the giant knife which one ended <laughs> up winning. It was cooking gadgets, which I Whoa, really, really like. I am surprised. Okay. Yeah. I like that it's cooking gadgets because I was sitting here thinking... Okay, November, what's a good theme for November? What's in, sometimes we like to do based off of the holiday? Well, Thanksgiving, of course. Thanksgiving is the biggest holiday in November. And 
the closest I couldn't think of, I could, you know, just saying Thanksgiving gadgets doesn't make sense. So I put down cooking gadgets as a uh, secondary uh, way to describe it because you're going to be in the kitchen cooking for Thanksgiving and, you know, getting your family together and stuff like that. So uh, I'm really happy that cooking gadgets won because it kind of fits the theme of November. Um, I've recently, in the past say, year, really gotten into cooking, and I think we did a kitchen gadget theme maybe a year ago, something like that, or in January or something like that. Um, and since then, I've been I've been really you know getting more and more and more into cooking. So I feel like I have a pretty good idea of uh, what a good cooking gadget could be. So today. We are taking a look, and I'm, we're going to do this one live. I, I was thinking about recording a video, but I thought maybe we could just do it live. At the Vibe. The Vibe. And the Vibe is a garlic chopper. Now, I can't tell if this is the company name, and then they make a garlic chopper, or the garlic chopper's name Vibe. I need to, I guess, do a little bit of research on that. Yeah. But, oh, you know, I think Chef... Chefin. By Chefin. Isn't that the logo? By, by oh, Chefin, yeah. That's by thing. Chefin, okay. Yeah, definitely. So the okay, idea is okay. um, when, when I, whenever I chop garlic, and it also uh, works for ginger, it's one of the hardest things to chop because it's so small. Uh, sometimes I just go ahead and just sh you know put it through the mincer, the little press thing, because I don't want to chop it up because... Um, you know, it's so small and you have to get your knife so close to your fingers. So I always have a really difficult time uh, chopping those things, especially ginger. Ginger's uh, really difficult. And so in order to get a really perfect chop, uh, this looks like a, a great little alternative is you just throw the, the already peeled garlic into this and then you roll it along the table and it will chop it for you. So first we have to peel our garlic here. There we go. Let's take off just a little end. And as you can kind of see, what I mean is just, you're. this is such a small thing, you're getting the big knife next to it and you're trying to chop it and then eventually you go like this and you're trying to stick into the knife and it's just really frustrating. So let's just kind of prep this garlic. Now let's open it up. Obviously if you were gonna, oh no, it comes in a blister pack. I wasn't, uh, wasn't well prepared. you got a big knife. I do have a big knife here. Let's see how difficult. <laughs> I think we're going to use the big knife. Oh my God. Get band aid. Ah, Roll 911. We go. It's a really sharp knife. Um, okay, well, this blister pack is oh. be a, a pain. I mean, and when I say it's a sharp knife, I'm right. Where is your open it? There we go. <laughs> Where, you know what? I probably have it just right here. It is. <laughs> Could have just used this the whole time. Yeah, there you go. Oh, well. Okay, caution, sharp blade attention. There's this piece of tape all the way around it. So we okay. got to pull that off. I can't quite see where Caution, it... do not use on garlic. Hmm. Caution, do not use on live television show. What? <laughs> um, okay, so let's kind of take a look at this device. It's uh, clear and it has these wheels. One of them has a gear on it. So as it rolls along and then the blades inside will move as it rolls along. Sorry for that glitchy camera. We still got one glitchy camera in it. Um, so it's a toy and a garlic mixer. It is, basically. A toy and a garlic press. Or garlic mixer, not garlic press. It looks like it has two. Okay, so this is one of these, I think, is the way to open it up. There we go. And if you wanted to wash it, I did see that it was machine washable. You can put it on the top of your uh, washing machine and to make it machine washable. Okay. So that's how you open it up and get the blade out. And that first one is just to put the garlic in. So let's go ahead and just drop the garlic in. There it goes. It's what inside. was that thing? You, you actually cut the end of the garlic off. Is that like a thing? Yeah. I've never, I've never done garlic. I mean, I've, I've always cut it off. It's just that little thing close to the. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Close okay. to the flower. If you, yeah, if you, okay. if you're really unfamiliar with garlic, it comes in a little clove. So you break off okay. little garlic pieces of the clove. Yeah. No garlic, I've seen, but I, I never knew about cutting the little end yeah. thing off. Okay. It's just, maybe it's just preference. Maybe you don't have to. I cut think it my off. father used his cigar thing to cut the end of that <laughs> exactly. off. Exactly. Sure. It'd be perfect for that. Um, so we have one piece of garlic in there. Let's uh, cut to the wide, and I guess we're just gonna push it along and see what it does. <laughs> I'll make sound effects. Okay, so it's moving. Oh, it makes its own sound effects. Oh, well, it wasn't closed all the way. Here we go. Okay. Okay. I'm just going to roll it back and forth just a few times. It's definitely chopping stuff up here. Let's um, go. 
little update. You can kind of see some of it chopped up in there. And I'm just going back and forth as it's chopping. So let's go back down here. And sorry for that glitchy camera, I'm trying to stay off it. I mean, this is definitely easier than trying to chop, yeah. chop it. Yeah. Now, do you have a use for chopped garlic today? Oh, uh, not today. No, <laughs> no, not today. Okay. But okay. chopped garlic is great in uh, like hamburger meat or, um, I mean, garlic is just one of those spices that's, that could go in almost everything. Um, okay, so we're, we're basically chopped. I'm gonna open that up and kind of get a nice view of what that looks like inside of there. Yeah, there we go, chopped garlic. Okay, so what we would do, I guess now, is open the side, take out that blade, and then just tap it onto wherever we're wanting to get that out. There we go. And it looks like there's still a little bit in there. Oh, I'm noticing, I was wondering how it was making the garlic stop. At the very bottom, there's some little stoppers down there so that it would press up against it and then need to be, uh, need the blades to go through it. So there we so go. So Chad, you, you do every, every clove or whatever each piece, you do each one separately? You could probably fit, I would say, two two cloves in here. Two, two okay. Yeah, so that and, yeah it, it says it fits one to two uh, peeled oh, garlic okay. cloves. Um, and it also uh, chops peeled ginger, is what it's saying. Roll to chop the garlic, open and remove the stainless steel blade, then remove the chopped garlic. You can put this on the top rack of the dishwasher. But I gotta say, other the, the most difficult part is getting the garlic out of this again, because it kind of sticks all over to the device. Um, but once that's done, you have, um, my garlic's a little bit, uh, I had it kind of sitting out a little bit. It was turning green here. Um, but that's a that's a, some pretty nice peeled garlic, or chopped garlic, sorry. Very different than um Oh, okay, that's garlic. pretty good. Oh, yeah. that's, okay. It's I'd more that's in the close-up than it, yeah. It looked like uh, a little bit in the machine, but in yeah. the close-up, it's a fair there's, amount. There's a good amount there. Yeah, I mean, mm. the, and the alternative is sitting there chopping it, using your finger to get off the blade back onto the Ugh. board, chopping it again, using your finger to kind of press it off the blade, got a little bit on my finger there. So I would say that is a pretty good alternative. I could also imagine um, someone who would be elderly or maybe has some um, uh, movement issues in their hands or something, that this would be really nice because chopping garlic is kind of a fine procedure. Same thing with uh, ch chopping um, uh, uh, can it? we guess oh, it? Can we guess at the price? Yeah, take a take a stab at it if you would. I'm going to go with eleven ninety nine. Ooh, okay. Oh, is it too high or too mm -hmm. low? It is pretty close. I found this for seven ninety nine. Oh, yep, not too bad. Oh, okay, and then it is the exact same price on Amazon.com as well. So you can get it on Amazon as an add-on item. It is uh, prime, but as an add-on, which means that you need to have yeah. like extra okay. things added to it. Uh, got some pretty okay reviews on Amazon as well. Four stars out of four reviews. But I would say that I, I like it. I don't know if I'd want to pull it out every time. That I it, it was almost like if you were gonna do a really garlicky soup or something with a lot of garlic and you had to get a, a whole bunch done this would be perfect to just kind of whip it all out there and, and be finished with it. Um, but yeah, the garlic chopper. Um, you can also get it at Target. Target is uh, where I actually picked this up because the uh, pole and the uh, time I had to buy it was kind of close to each other. So I just went to my local Target and picked it up. Uh, Chefin, uh, and that is the Vibe Garlic Chopper. And now I just have some garlic sitting here. So I, this is gonna be a little... <laughs> I don't know exactly how to clean this one up. Well, with that, let's jump on into Dick's Gadget Warehouse. They're geeky and they're goofy. Together they are loopy. When gadgets pass away, he takes them out to play. In Dick's Gadget Warehouse. Foghorn. 
And our email says here is another video of a gadget from my warehouse. I still use these old drives from time to time. And uh, there's a little more to this, but we'll, I'll read it after we see our letter from Ryan Winkler. Hey, Dick and Chad. Today I thought I would show off my iMation 120 megabyte super disk drive. <laughs> wow! The iMation 120 megabyte super disk drive came out shortly after the iOmega 100 megabyte zip drive came out. The main difference between the two drives is that the iOmega zip drive would only read the iOmega zip disks. The iMation 120 megabyte super disk drive would read both 120 megabyte super disks as well as the 1.44 megabyte floppy disks. It's plugged into the Mac via a USB cable. We're going to do a test between the super disk drive and an 8 gigabyte USB flash drive. I have selected a little over 112 megabytes worth of files to use as our test copy. It takes about 37 seconds to copy these files from the internal hard drive to the USB flash drive. Now let's copy those same files to a super disk. Start our timer. This is the super disk drive in a Linux PC that I still have. When it came out, I paid $149 for it. Still copying. <laughs> this is a super disk drive I purchased for a laptop I was using at the time. I paid about $200 for it. When the iMation super disk drive came out, iMation claimed that the super disk drive would read standard 1.44 floppies at twice the speed of a standard floppy disk drive. Finally, it's done, and it only took approximately five minutes and 24 oh seconds. Oh my gosh. Now, oh my God. as you can see, I can eject the super disk and put in a standard floppy disk, and the super disk drive will read the standard floppy disk as well. When first released, you two could have the speed and capacity of the external 120 megabyte super disk drive for between $200 and $249. Thanks for watching. Oh my gosh, that is so cool. Um, da -da -da -da. <laughs> my oh, do you have zip one? drive. Oh my gosh. Yes. This is the, uh, the, I think the last one before they decided let's not make these anymore. Yeah. This was a, the 750 megabyte version. Actually, I think it, uh, Dennis had it for his artwork. And then they had the zip disks, which were about 20. 20 bucks uh, each. Now, was there any connection between the zip disks and like zipping up files into a thing? Like, were, were these all like connected somehow? I don't know. You know, I, I don't think, I, th I think the advantage of it was like for Dennis, who, right. you know, that does artwork, was that each disk was the equivalent of like, depending on the density, like, like 15 regular floppy disks. And as, as Ryan said in, in the video, uh, some of them could read just regular floppies, so you could just buy this, and it, it could be uh, the only disk drive that, that you needed. But it was short live because just about then, they started coming out with flash drives and the click right. drive, and, um, you know, they, they got about five years out. I think it was iOmega who did them. Yeah, yeah. it was iOmega. Um, so they were a big hit for a while, but they didn't stay around. Yeah. Uh, and was then I was, uh, was this about the time as CD-ROMs too? Because I remember that, you know, it ended up, you just, I just burn a CD. I just See, right, yeah, a, a, yeah, exactly. A, a, exactly, exactly. But Ryan added, and it's kind of interesting, uh, he said, I, I use the old drives from time to time. It's mainly when someone finds an old disc that has some data, but no way to read it. Right. I even have a five, a five and a quarter floppy disk for the same purpose. Uh, a person reached out to me when their aunt passed away and found all her genealogy work was on five and a quarter floppy drives, <laughs> wow. which I was able to copy over to a USB drive. 
which made the person very grateful. Um, anyway, thanks for the show, Ryan Winkler. That's so, so cool. I love how cool. He, he also just had the other ones like around. He's like, man, I was really invested, really invested in these <laughs> yeah. uh, zip drives. Yeah, man. And no, then it's gonna... just so funny that today, five minutes to copy a yes. file over. I I would get frustrated if it took five minutes to wirelessly transfer the footage that I need for Gizwiz, which is gigabytes, to from one computer to another. Like, you know, I record here on this PC and then I edit on a different PC and I just drag it over the network and it just works. And it's like, if that takes five minutes. I'm, I get frustrated. I'm like, I can't handle this. And it's yeah. easily, you know, six, seven gigabytes. Well, Oh when you God. got into computers, how fast were modems, or, or was the modem built into your computer? Uh, I, I can't remember. I do remember that we had dial-up for a few years. I remember oh, you did? Oh, okay. We didn't have the internet at all for, for oh, a while, okay. um, but CD-ROMs were still a thing, and so, like, uh, I remember getting my first games on, like, uh, it was a Magic School Bus was the first game that um, I remember playing, and that was on, on CD-ROM, and I had a ton of fun on that. Um, there was a, a small window where I think we had a, a really old computer that uh, did not have a CD-ROM in it. Uh, I remember, I think it had a Pentium processor. This was before they started numbering them, like Pentium <laughs> 2, Pentium 4. It was just, Pent it was just a Pentium processor. Um, <clears throat> and... I think the only thing to play on that ge that computer was uh, PowerPoint, uh, and I'm not joking. We had a lot of fun making PowerPoint presentations. We would make stories <laughs> um, in PowerPoint and make different slides, and or I would just oh, use PowerPoint funny. to like draw, uh, use you know ma making objects and stuff like that. And then my mind was blown when I went to school and we had a Macintosh that had kid pics, and that was incredible. Um, I loved kid pics uh, for for a long time, um, and then CD-ROMs started coming out, and then the internet. And I have no idea what the speed was uh, that we had. We had CompuServe was out. Oh my gosh! Um, Com yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. CompuServe. Back then, I, I had CompuServe, and uh, I used to write boating column. And I remember saying to Dennis, my boating column was four pages, double space, type, just text. And I would say to Dennis, I dial up and I would say to Dennis, believe it or not, these four pages of text will be in the powerboat office in California in less than four minutes. <laughs> <laughs> text. Isn't that funny? It was like a, kilo, text, it was like a few kilobytes space, of data. <laughs> double space text. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah. I know. That's pretty incredible, um, yeah. And um, I w yeah, I wasn't I wasn't connected enough to to know any of the stats that we had. And then I remember that we ended up getting DSL, um, be, and it was a wonder because uh, uh, my sibling, uh, my older sibling, and uh, my sister, older sister, uh, was really into online chat rooms at the time. And so she would use up the phone line, and we couldn't <laughs> get on the phone for hours and. She had to schedule times where she was allowed to go meet, talk to her friends online. Oh and so we ended gosh. up getting DSL, and that was, that was fantastic. Um, and it wasn't, what's funny is I ended up getting my first computer, my first own desktop at the start of middle school because it, we had found the product, Dragon, naturally speaking, Dragon Dictate. And that was um, revolutionary for me because I was dyslexic. And so we got a computer that met the minimum system requirements to run Dragon Dictate. And I got my own desktop in, in uh, my own bedroom so I could write papers using Dragon Dictate. And uh, that is really kind of the start of my love for technology. Before then, it was just kind of something around. But when I got my first computer in my in my room, I was able to spend as much time as I wanted on it and install games and troubleshoot why they wouldn't work and and get to know you know how a computer really works. Um, before then, it was like if if the my computer icon wasn't on the desktop, I didn't understand how to get to the explorer window. <laughs> like if That's that was sick. missing, it was like I'm lost. I I can't do anything. 
And then when I got my own computer, of course, I learned the ins and outs of everything. Um, but yeah, that was, that was how I got into, into technology. Pretty neat, pretty we neat. We still have a ton left in the show, so yes, <laughs> this well, turned out to be a long we, we, one. We need more videos. Okay, yes. so Ryan's video, I believe, was the last video we have. So if you could make a video, uh, we need something for next week. Uh, anything about a gadget, okay? A gadget you bought, a gadget you own, a gadget in the cellar. Um, make a little two to three minute video, put it on YouTube. On the drop down menu, you can click on listed and then only people with the URL can see it and send us the URL to giz, uh, is mail. mail at gizwiz.tv, mail at gizwiz.tv. If we show it, um, between now and uh, uh, December 17th, you'll get an Alfred E. Newman picture and a copy of Mad Magazine. And who knows after December 7th, because Mad is leaving the city. I'll have no free Mads, no mailing, uh, no mail room, but we'll work something out. You need to make a uh, friend so, in, in uh, where are they moving to Burbank, L.A.? Yes, they're moving to Burbank. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. you need to make a friend exactly. over there and say, send me some man magazines. Send me some, right. I but then I, I need some. a friend somewhere who can do all the mailing for me. <laughs> exactly. It's, 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 uh, yeah, but we'll work out something. Perfect. Uh, mail at gizwiz.tv is where the URL uh, for your video goes. With that, let's jump into the letter. <laughs> Ah. And the letter requires a photo. Do you have the photo there? Oh, not yet. One second. I'm not. Uh, okay. Um, or you can, or you can just play the uh, warehouse theme, and it'll be there. Because the letter is from Blugia or Bluga, B L A G U A, who writes, Dick, in the Dick's Gadget Warehouse video, is that a typo? Should it not read there, T-H-E-Y, apostrophe R-E, uh -oh. instead? To, you know what? I'm both of them. We'll do it here. I don't them. have a good way to pause this, but. Uh oh, okay. Um, go. keep, keep going. It's the And I'll tell you movie. about my take on this. All right. All right. Stop. There, geeky and goofy. I can't stop. I can't oh, stop okay. it here. Uh, oh, okay. Let me go get you know, the I, actual I, I, fire. I sent, you a, I sent you a still store of it. Is it not on um, uh, the show notes? No, I don't see it yet. Um, oh, there it is. Oh, okay. I do see it. Here we go. Yeah. Open. An okay. Image. Just yeah. click on that, and I'll tell you my theory. Okay. Here we go. Boop. Okay. So they're geeky and they're goofy. <laughs> In reality, they're both wrong. Is yeah. that not right? Is it not right that they're both wrong? Yes, I yes, think right. so. So my feeling they, they is are. that, and I'll have to go back to try and find out who sent us this, this video. It's <laughs> maybe a year or two old. Was thinking that since we call this the same done show, done the because originally yeah. the <laughs> the very first video credit has dumb spelled D-U-N-B. And Leo and I said, well, you know what? It is a done show. Let's just leave it. Just keep it. And so my guess is that he's goofing here, figuring I'll spell it wrong both oh, times. Oh, I'll get it both incorrect times. twice. <laughs> yes. But anyway, uh, Beluga, B-L-A-G-U-A, you were the first one to email <laughs> us uh, to point out that yeah that you are correct that both spellings are incorrect but oh, we think man. it's a joke okay and we're highly un <laughs> unlikely to ever correct it but we're glad to know that someone noticed that they're wrong <laughs> it's uh i have gotten a few messages because we spell it uh same done show on um the patreon i have gotten a few messages like hey yes. uh your thing is wrong it's like nope it's correct yeah, let me that's, tell that's you us. That's us. That's very funny. Very good one, Blue. You know, it's a good thing we weren't uh, Webster people who worked on the dictionary because we just said, oh, I think it's wrong, but let it go. <laughs> it looks yeah. fine to me. But yeah, let yeah. it go. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, go. exactly. Um, I'm so excited because we get to find out what the heck is it? Was it? Oh, my gosh. 
uh, every Did two you months. know? Did you have any idea what it was? I don't. Okay, so let's go back and let's look at this thing. Um, here it is. I I would guess that it's... Wait, I'm going to ask my two guests in the studio. Do you know what that is? Uh, I have Adam here and I have Nikki here. No That's idea. What it is. No, neither one has an idea. My guess would be that it's some sort of uh, heat glove thing, but it looks... Oh my gosh, I think I just figured it out. I had always assumed the way that this was, with there was that this was not an upper part. I thought that it just ended there, but I just saw these teeth for the first time. I thought that those teeth were those grooves back there, and... Uh, I thought that it was basically one half of a heat glove, but now I think that it's an actual heat glove. That is, that is, is? correct. So okay. go go to the top, and I I have a picture of it in use. I ass I assume that it because this small, I didn't ever it's, see the they're top tiny. half. They're, they're tiny. I thought um, that it was like. Is it not? Is it not live it? yet? With uh, no, it is. It is. I just got to get up. Oh, there. it is. Oh, okay. There yeah. it is. It, it, it's oh, like it's a itty finger bitty. mitt. Oh. That's you see, it's a, it's the micro mitt. Oh my gosh, it's so. Small. There you go, there you go. <laughs> okay, and they're they're ten dollars, and it's just if you have something in like the microwave and you're afraid the dish is hot, all you need is this little micro mitt. Oh my gosh. To to hold it. So only good. five people got it right. Wow, not even uh, the whole twelve. Wow. Not even the whole twelve. So we gave some extra. Uh, uh, Issues uh, to winners. Yeah. A lot of people uh, using hippopotamus, hippopotamus lips, hippo right. dentures for hippopotamus, uh, dentures for senior vampires. Um, oh, and five people said, I can't believe it. Five people said it's something you put in your mouth and then lick your cat so you can like <laughs> pretend to be. That's to pretend funny. to be another cat. That's funny. The reason is is because they make uh, gloves that have those little bumps on it for petting oh. a cat, and it pulls the hair off. And so it, oh. it's a tongue, a tongue thing. That's actually very funny. Um, oh, okay. Uh, we Becky have some sent in uh, here uh, a torture beanbag chair, <laughs> which it could be. Uh, someone said it's used by Swiss Swiss monks. To make holes in their favorite cheese. Oh, that's good. Which is the great answer, isn't it? Uh, I love this too. A bed of nails as made by the Twizzler Company. Oh my gosh, that's funny. I, isn't that great? That's good. Is, isn't that great? Yeah. A 3D printed uh, tongue. Right. Um, I, I think w worst bleacher seat ever. <laughs> Uh, and, and then one of my favorite is, uh, oh, here it is. This is a pancake to waffle converter. <laughs> is that right funny? There. Yes. So you, you take a flat fit pancake and you squeeze this all over it, and now it's a waffle That's because great. you've made a bunch of holes. You guys are funny. way funnier than me. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's very funny. So they uh, won this, the Stranger Things Mad Magazine. I yes, see. you. Uh, everybody uh, on that list will will get a copy of Mad. So everybody who got it right and is on that list of funny uh, answers will get the November December issue of Mad Magazine, and the new November half of December game is up there. Um, and since Mad is leaving the city uh, around December twenty second. You we're going to play through December 17th. And then once I post winners, notify me immediately <laughs> and I will be able to send you January, February mad. And then we'll, in January, we're going to start the game over with different prizes. Perfect. Um, and here it is. Let's take a look at it. Uh, it's um, this thing right here. This is the whole gadget, not just part of the gadget. Um, it's uh, pretty obvious to me that this is a device made by the uh, Cheeto Corporation to make sure your fingers don't get uh, all that orange dust on them. So you could pick up Cheetos individually. Not bad. Not, not bad. bad. Okay. Not, a, not a bad answer. If you think you know what it is, get a guessing over at gizwiz.biz. Click what the heck is it game on the sidebar. And email your guess on over to Dick 
Remember 12 Mad Magazines for the correct answer, 24 for funny, hilarious, clever, interesting, and thought-provoking answers. <laughs> so get a guessin' over at gizwiz.biz. I said it before and I'll say it again, big thank you to our patrons. If you love this show and you wanna give back, Patreon is the best way to do it. Patreon.com is a place to support independent content creators like ourselves. And uh, we love our patrons. Big, big, big thanks to you guys. Right now, we currently have 258 patrons. From the bottom of our heart here at Gizwiz, thank you so much for your support and for your uh, continued generosity. Uh, if you like the show, please head on over to patreon.com. Support. Uh, if you don't want to give, that's kind of like a reoccurring every episode. And it doesn't have to be a big amount at all. We'll ask for like a dollar or like less. Um, then oh, uh, it could be 25 cents an episode. Exactly. What do we care? Totally. Uh, that'd be a dollar a month. Um, we'd absolutely uh, love it if you, if you head on over there and do that. If you don't want to give reoccurring, uh, there is a PayPal link on our website. Ooh, uh, we have an update. I need to tell you about that. Uh, Dick about something about that PayPal link. A little, little surprise, little surprise for coming up. Um, and, uh, please, um, donate. Gizwiz.tv is where our, uh, podcast is hosted. And so you can see it live. We're live every Thursday, just about. If there's ever a content change, you can check the top of the website for that. Uh, at, uh, 4.30 Pacific Time, 7.30 Eastern Time, here at Gizwiz.tv. You can also subscribe to the show, check past episodes, check show notes, check the gadgets that we talked about. Links to all of those are there. And also links to Dick's articles that he writes about each gadget at gizwiz.biz. Thanks so much for watching this episode of the Gizwiz. And we'll see you next week. Bye. I'll be here.